Here's random variable x has the commutative distribution function f given by f of x is equal to 0 for x less than 0, f of x is equal to 2x squared minus x to the power of 4 for x between 0 and 1, and f of x is equal to 1 for x greater than 1. A part i. We are asked to evaluate the probability that x is between 0 0.25 and 0 0.75. This is fairly straightforward. We just need to use the cumulative distribution function. First, evaluating f of 0 0.75 and then subtracting the evaluation of f of 0 0.25. Okay, so we're just going to substitute each of these values into our formula. So we get two lots of 0 0.75. 0 0.75 squared minus 0 0.75 to the power of 4. Take away 2 lots of 0 0.25 squared minus 0 0.25 to the power of 4. Now you can stick that into your calculator all in one go. When you do so and evaluate it carefully you should get the answer 11 over 16 and it's best just to leave it as a fraction if, uh, as that is an exact answer. How do we get marks in this question? Well first of all you get a method mark for demonstrating that you understand that the commutative distribution function can be used in this way and then finally, if you've got that method mark, you get the accuracy mark for getting 11 sixteenths or a decimal equivalent. Okay, let's have a look at part two. Part two says that we want to show that the median sat m satisfies the equation 2m to the power of 4 minus 4m squared plus 1 equals 0. Now what we know for the median is that if I put the median into our commutative distribution function, Median is halfway, so it will accumulate half the problem, so it will be equal to 0 0.5. So, substituting m into our commutative distribution function, we get 2m squared minus m to the power of 4 equal to 0 0.5. So first, I'm going to double up the equation so I don't have to work with this fraction. So times by 2. And so I have now 4m squared minus 2m to the power of 4 equal to 1. Now I just want to rearrange the equation so that I match this. So I'm going to subtract 4m squared from both sides. And I'm going to add 2m to the power of 4 to both sides of this equation. So I get 2m to the power of 4 minus 4m squared plus 1 equal to 0 as required. Okay, well how do I get my marks on this part of the question? First of all, we get a statement mark for showing the substitution into the commutative distribution function and set an equal to 0 0.5 in order to lead to this equation here. Okay, finally, let's have a look at part three. Part three wants us to find the value of m given the answer correct to three significant figures. Now actually what we have here, 2m to the power of 4 minus 4m squared plus 1 equals 0, this is a quadratic in m squared. So you could consider this as 2m squared squared minus 4 lots of m squared plus 1 equal to 0. Now, that means that we can factorise or try and factorise this quadratic in m squared to get a solution for m.
Unfortunately, it's unfactorizable. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a quadratic formula. So we're going to use m squared equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. So remember, just because we're doing statistics doesn't mean any of our core methods go out the window. That, of course, is all over 2a. So we're going to get m squared equals b is minus 4. So demonstrate your substitution correctly. Try not to do part of the working as you go along. Demonstrate how you substitute into it initially. So we get minus, minus 4, plus or minus, minus 4 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is 1, all over 2 lots of 1. Now let's just type that into our calculator and evaluate what we get for m squared. If I do the plus version of this formula first of all, we get an answer of 1.7071 to four decimal places. And then if I evaluate the negative root, we get an answer of 0 0.2. 9, 2, 9, again if we do that to four decimal places. Now actually, I don't, two things to note here, I don't want m squared, I want m, and second of all, there's two solutions. Which one am I going to use? Well, if you go back to your original question, you'll see that x must lie between 0 and 1, so square root of 1.7 will be larger than 1, so it's not going to be this, so then finally all I have to do is m will be square root of 0 0.2929 as it needs to lie in the range and when we work through that we get an answer to three significant figures of 0 0.541 so let's look at how you get marks on this part of the question well, you get a method mark, an accuracy mark for demonstrating the correct use of the quadratic formula. And then finally, we get a method mark for doing the square root of the correct root that we're interested in, an accuracy mark for then getting the answer to the correct to three significant figures of 0 0.541. Moving on to part B. Let's just give myself a little bit of space here. So in part B, we're first we're asked to find an expression for f of x valid for 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1, where f denotes the probability density function of x. So little f of x is equal to the result when I differentiate big f of x. So little f of x differentiating our commutative distribution function gives us 4x minus 4x cubed. And that is all that is needed. So when we come to getting the marks on this equation, get a method mark for demonstrating that we need to differentiate the commutative distribution function, and we get an accuracy mark following on from that if you then differentiate it to get the correct function. Finally, we want to evaluate the expectation of the square root of x. So, part two in this, the expectation of the square root of x will be found by doing integral between 0 and 1, square root of x multiplied by the function x, which is 4x minus 4x cubed dx. To make life easier, I'm going to take this common factor of 4 outside the front of the integral, 
it helps. I need to expand this bracket here. So actually what I'm doing is x to the power of a half multiplied by x minus x cubed dx. So a little bit of work has to be done before we can even think about the integrating, making sure we get it into the correct form. So what we're going to do is x to the power of a half times x to the power of 1 will give us x to the power of 3 over 2. And then x to the power of a half times x cubed will give us x to the power of 7 over 2, 3 and a half. So now we have the function that we need to integrate. We can integrate this. So remembering the constant 4 outside the bracket, x to the power of 3 over 2. We increase the index by 1. So in other words, what we're going to do is we're going to add 2 to the numerator of our fraction. So I get x to the power of 5 over 2. And then we're going to divide by our new power. So in other words, I'm then going to flip upside down the fraction and multiply by it. So I get 2 fifths of x to the power of 5 over 2. Take away, again, increase the index of x to the power of 7 over 2 by 1. What we do is we just add the denominator to the numerator, so I get 9 over 2. I'm going to divide by 9 over 2, which means flip the fraction upside down, so it becomes 2 ninths, and multiply by it instead. You should make sure that you're confident working with fractions. It helps to speed things up, and it certainly helps to evaluate this and avoid silly mistakes when you're working. This, of course, is then evaluated between 0 and 1. So what we need to evaluate is 4 times. We're going to put in the 1, so 2 fifths of 1 to the power of 5 over 2, minus 2 over 9, 1 to the power of 9 over 2. And it's good practice just to put the 0 in. It may evaluate to 0, but it's good practice to demonstrate this, that you do understand full definite integration. And, of course, in the future, not all functions that you're going to work with actually evaluate to zero when you put zero into it. So it's just making sure that we don't fall into any sort of bad habits. So there we go. Right. Having put, substituted all our values in, all that's left to do is actually just use your calculator to evaluate this. And so when you do evaluate this on your calculator, you should come up with an answer, hopefully 32 over 45. And again, leave it as a fraction. It's an exact answer. It's the most accurate answer you can give. Right then. So let's identify where you get the marks for this question. So you are going to get a method mark and an accuracy mark simply for demonstrating the correct integral that you are going to be evaluating. So that very first step there. Of course, then you have to be able to uh, expand it and get it to the correct form before you can get to the rest of the uh, question and answer it. But you're then going to get an accuracy mark if you've worked correctly and got to this stage where you've been a, done the correct integration and substitute the values in. And then finally, you get an accuracy mark for this last question here.